My name is Andrea MacDonald, and I'm the director of the Pennsylvania State Historic Preservation Office, which is a bureau of the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission, uh, Pennsylvania's official history agency. I first wanted to introduce uh, staff from the PHMC who are with us this evening. Uh, those from the State Historic Preservation Office, and I'll ask them to wave their hands, uh, are Shelby Splain. She's our Education and Outreach Coordinator. Sean Massey is an architectural designer and works on a lot of our tax credit projects as well as some of these initiatives like uh, Hack the Mill. Corey Kegerice is in the back. He is our Eastern Pennsylvania Community Preservation Coordinator, works extensively with our local governments. And we have Elizabeth Rera. She's a, our Division Chief for Preservation Services, which is our National Register of Historic Places program, our community uh, outreach, our certified local government program, and our uh, uh, Disaster Planning for Historic Properties initiative. We also have two members from our sister bureau, the Bureau of Historic Sites and Museums, uh, which uh, oversees a lot of uh, PHMC-owned properties, in, including uh, Hope Lodge and, and Mather Mill. We have Brenda Regal. In the back, she's the director of the Bureau. <laughs> and Janice Mullen, who works with a lot of our uh, placed properties. On October 3rd of this year, we hosted a demonstration workshop to explore resiliency options for an historic mill within White Marsh Township. The workshop was conducted as part of the SHPO's Disaster Planning for Historic Properties Initiative, which is funded through a grant that we received from the National Park Service um, made available to states impacted by Hurricane Sandy. The lion's share of this funding um, involved survey projects which identified at-risk historic resources and where possible um, helped measure those risks. We focused on four pilot counties of the 18 that were damaged during the Hurricane Sandy um, event. We focused on Philadelphia, Bedford County, Monroe County, and Cameron County. Um, and worked with them to update both their survey and their comprehensive hazard mitigation plans within those counties. Survey is the backbone of a really good, healthy historic preservation program. And survey projects provide an opportunity to gather a lot of broadly um, useful data about a variety of things, not just historic resources. So in this case, we were able to add hazard risk to our standard collection of historic data that we typically gather for historic properties and include additional property um, information that helps uh, FEMA and Pima assess risk of historic properties. So we included things like flood zone, um, first floor and adjacent grade openings, um, where things lay, uh, laid in floodplains, and that sort of information that would help inform hazard mitigation as well as inform our database for historic resources. Um, in the pilot counties, uh, we did two phases of survey. Uh, phase one was a lot of survey in those four counties. Um, and that was completed by our consultant team from AECOM. Phase two, which we worked with a firm called Vision Planning and Consulting out of Maryland, um, included producing recommended mitigation actions and strategies um, for specific historic property types, as well as updating the county hazard mitigation plans. For each county, the contractor selected a sample of representative properties for which individual property sheets were created. And we tried to group them by type so that people would be able to find themselves within the scope of projects that we made recommendations for and be able to apply those same mitigation strategies to their properties. It included a summary of hazard risks and recommended mitigation actions. It also included simple flood visualizations that showed where the base flood elevation was in relation to the property. So a demonstration project focused on a single property seemed like a good idea to take the project kind of to the next level and develop further some of these ideas that we had from the phase two property sheets. We invited architecture and planning firms from throughout the region to attend a one-day workshop dedicated to learning about a single specific property, its specific history, its risks, its opportunities, and brainstorm possible hazard mitigation actions within the scale uh, and scope of an historic property. 
So how did we select the property that we wanted to focus on? Well, we looked at a couple of things. We wanted to look at a property that was itself at risk and how the needs of this property might be reflective of the needs of other historic properties throughout the Commonwealth. We wanted this to be replicable and scalable to a variety of different properties. So that led us to Mather Mill here in White Marsh Township. Mather Mill is a national register listed grist mill. It's representative of a common property type that is by definition near and of water. Um, it is in a declared sandy county that had not been previously addressed in our mitigation work. And the building is essentially an empty box, which gives us and the architects that we invited a lot of flexibility when they were looking at potential design solutions for this building. Finally, the other key was that um, we own the building. Um, Pennsylvania Historical Museum Commission has owned this building since 1966, which gave us a lot of access to the building and a lot of flexibility in how we were talking about the building. So let's look at Mather Mill a little bit specifically. Mather Mill fronts directly onto Mather's Lane, which is a one block long, two-ish lane road <laughs> that goes between Skipack and Bethlehem Pikes. It's right across um, Bethlehem Pike from Hope Lodge, which is another PHMC owned property. It's very close to the Pennsylvania Turnpike um, and also very close to the Wissahickon Creek, um, which is a source of some of our flooding issues. Uh, there's no sidewalks along Mather Lane. There's no crosswalks across Skipack Pike and Bethlehem Pike from this area. The Wissahickon Trail is located across the creek, but the only way to get between the two is to go down Skipback Pike. Uh, you can't cut across the creek in that area. And across the street from the mill, across Mather Lane, is a, a township-owned property, which we spoke with the township and were allowed to include within the design constraints of this project. The township-owned property across the street was the result of a FEMA acquisition demolition project for two houses that were under severe repetitive loss um, under FEMA's definition. So they continued to flood and flood and flood, and finally FEMA realized that the most efficient way to uh, mitigate these properties was actually to demolish them. Uh, the township owns it now, and the lots serve as green space, um, and we were allowed to include this within the scope of our project with the designers. So what are some of the issues at Mather Mill that would prompt this workshop? Well, both the mill and the township property are within the 100-year floodplain, and the mill itself sits very close to the floodway. Mather Mill has flooded several times during our ownership of the property, and Skipack Pikes Bridge over the Wissahickon Creek seems to function as somewhat of a dam in major flood events. The township-owned property across the street is subject, as I mentioned, to some, some FEMA open space requirements based on what you can do with it. Um, it does allow for some minimal development, but only if that use supports the use of the land as open space. As I mentioned, Mather Mill is listed in the National Register of Historic Places, and PHMC um, is actually in the process of disposing the property from, its, from our ownership. Um, so no specific or program exists for the building at this time. Any new owner may be subject to some sort of covenant which would require uh, future owners to abide by National Park Service uh, Secretary of the Interior standards for any changes or recommendations they make to the building. So in addition to inviting several architecture and design firms to come and talk about how to hack the mill, we also asked representatives from a variety of relevant agencies and organizations to attend to be available as subject matter experts for our architects and designers to ask them questions and to be able to, prov to provide information. This included the Friends of Hope Lodge, uh, which manages uh, Hope Lodge and Mather Mill for PHMC, as well as uh, folks from Pima, the Army Corps, and the Montgomery County Planning Commission. We divided our day up into three different sections. We had a morning session, which was a group of speakers providing, again, subject matter expert information on flooding and floodplains and the standards. Um, we had a tour of the mill at lunchtime, and after lunch, we had a guided discussion between the firms and the experts. Our morning session included um, a wonderfully received discussion by the Wissahickon Valley Watersheds um, representative who talked about floodplain issues. Uh, we had flood proofing techniques taught by someone from the Army Corps of Engineers, and we had a discussion about the National Park Service standards and guidelines by our very own Shelby Splain. Um, again, at noon, we took a, a, a little trip over to the mills, about a five minute shuttle ride, and we all got a chance to really see the building that we were talking about and experience it and be in it, um, get a sense of the interior space. Um, and it was a really great opportunity to have a conversation on site with SHPO staff, subject matter experts, and our designers. Beforehand, uh, Sean Massey, who was introduced earlier, um, did some fantastic Revit drawings of the building, which were all kind of current 
um, building elevations and materials that the designers could use uh, while preparing their uh, recommendations. And here's our afternoon discussion. Um, we had one extra guest who came in the afternoon, uh, Justin Spangler, uh, a water resources engineer with land studies, and he was able to really talk about floodplain restoration and what impact that might have on the property and the project. And I think that discussion also provided some good input for our architects and designers. Ernie Zabo of the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency was also able to attend and, and provide some information for our participants. Following our workshop, design firms were given two weeks to come up with some of the designs that you see on the boards around you. Um, we talked about use and resiliency at Mather Mill, and we wanted them to suggest strategies for scaling their proposal for other at-risk properties. We wanted them to see Mather Mill as both a specific and an open box of how we could use these things in other buildings that also flood. Um, we wanted it to be a lab, but not exclusively about the mill. We gave the firms after the workshop two weeks to come up with some designs and submit them back to us. Uh, we ultimately received materials from five firms, Mark B. Thompson Associates of Philadelphia, Seiler Drury Architecture of Norristown, BWA Architecture and Planning of Philadelphia, Heritage Design Collaborative of Media, and Vitetta of Harrisburg. We outlined three criteria against which the proposals would be evaluated. One was historic integrity, because it is a national register listed Commonwealth owned property. Uh, one being flood resilience. How does the proposal adapt the mill to withstand future flood events? And finally, rec replicability and modularity um, in order to be able to apply these interventions to other properties. We wanted people to see Mather Mill as a lab in which they could practice techniques, but really be able to apply them, develop a library of you know, criteria and ideas that we could apply to a wide range of historic at-risk properties. So it was about Mather Mill, but also about more than just Mather Mill. Each firm provided a preface to their proposal that restated the problem as they interpreted it. Uh, for some, this was the substantial portion of their submission, and for others, it was a much more visual approach to the problem. Um, it was an opportunity to really make sort of a, a property sheet 2.0, the kind of property sheets that I talked about earlier, where we focused on specific property typologies and how they might react to flooding instances. We were really looking at this as a, as an, as a further example of how we might take that to the next level. Um, we really wanted our design professionals to kind of have a lot of creativity and a lot of flexibility in the proposals that they gave us. Mitigating flood risk through site intervention was also a large part of most of the submissions. This is BWA Architecture and Planning's recommendation for a number of interventions that include rerouting Mathers Lane to unify the mill property and the township property into one more continuous floodplain. Vitetta recommended working with Penda to reconstruct part of the Skipback Pike Bridge to improve flooding conditions there, and maybe even incorporate some pedestrian and cycling infrastructure. And Siler and Drury recommended a reconstructed wetland on the township property with improved connections to the creek through the mill's original raceway. <clears throat> Each proposal really represented a different level of intervention to the building, from leaving the building alone to completely gutting the inside of it and making it a kind of a new space. Um, some of them had temporary, easy to remove fixtures, and some were more permanent. The proposal from Seiler and Drury included the most substantial alteration to the mill um, and included the infilling of the basement, creating a new third floor, and building a rear addition on the mezzanine uh, to house restrooms. Um, you'll also see out um, among the boards um, a suggestion that our own Sean Massey put together um, for his ideas on how the, the mill could best be reused in a flooding situation. So in addition to producing solutions specific to Mather Mill, participating firms were asked how these solutions could be scaled to address other buildings and communities in Pennsylvania. Heritage Design Collaborative specific, specifically recommended creating a taxonomy of properties to quantify historic significance and hazard risk. And something was done similarly by PennDOT in the 90s when working at historic bridges and those types of historic resources. So our next steps with this project are continuing on our internal discussions of the information that we gained from our design teams. Um, we're considering how we might take these design solutions to a next level, um, how we might further develop them in the future. We'd also love to continue to have conversations about how we might be able to replicate this model, this design charrette, in other communities where flooding 
uh, occurs and how we might be able to help them address flooding in those areas. Um, specifically, we're looking at Philadelphia as another example that wants to get involved in having a similar charrette and uh, focusing on some of their flooded buildings. Uh, we want to continue to refine the workshop format based on feedback that we've gotten from our architects and designers and staff that were there so we can really continue to craft a useful program that can be replicated in other areas across the Commonwealth. I have to thank John Gardozik, who is our project manager for the Hurricane Sandy effort for putting this proposal together. He wanted to be here, unfortunately he's not feeling well. Um, but if you have additional questions about the project, about uh, the boards that you have, about any of the information that we've presented tonight, I would urge you to reach out to him. Uh, my cards are also available on the front if you have questions that you want to ask or suggestions for buildings that you want us to focus on in the future. We'd love to hear your input. Um, we'd love to continue this conversation as we continue to focus on on um, you know, hazard issues with historic properties across the Commonwealth. Hopefully more people will hear about it and share it with their friends and family uh, and we can uh, continue to have more preservation successes. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm Doug Seiler, uh, Principal of Seiler Jury Architecture in Norristown. We were one of the architectural firms that participated in the workshop. And uh, behind me here is the presentation that we put together for uh, the Hack the Mill uh, project. So uh, if you want, uh, and you're... I'm, I'm Kevin Haram, the president of Friends of Hope Lodge. Okay. So uh, Kevin was at the workshop too. If you want, Kevin, I'll just sort of walk you through what we did here, if that's okay with you. So uh, these were nine drawings that we put together. We decided to take a graphic approach, figuring if it's shared around the state people won't take the time to read words. So uh, essentially, uh, we took a pretty strong intervention approach to the mill in that we are keeping its character along the street where it's seen and on the back we're proposing uses uh, because our theory is, is that an historic building is best preserved if it's used. It's when they sit empty, it's like a car that you never run. And a car that doesn't run, its tires rot, its engine uh, rusts, and it, it, it eventually dies. So we actually proposed uh, a, to use the mill by putting in a third floor because the volume is so tall inside this building. If you look in here, you can see it's maybe 30-some feet tall. We slipped in a third floor of a commercial use, like an office use, that could pay the money to support the mill and therefore have nonprofit uses downstairs, such as the museum idea that came up from the uh, the, the workshop. So, and then to allow the building to be occupied, there were several strategies. If you look over here, that are, I need my glasses to read them, but there's dry flood proofing, wet flood proofing, uh, raising critical functions out of the floodplain. So, essentially, to have it function as a banquet hall or a public space, slash museum, party space, bathrooms, kitchen overlooks the great room and you can come outside and people could enjoy the park on a deck, windows that open up to the, to the, to the, to the beautiful green uh, forest over the creek. The big ideas essentially are use the building, public, private, and then secondly is bring the water through the mill, one is an educational thing, that's how mills were used, and then create a wet plain, reconstruct a wet plain across Mather Lane, because there's a culvert under German, Bethlehem, I guess that skip back pike that connects to the creek now. So that would take some pressure of the water off of that bridge and I think that's kind of the big idea. It's uh, site mitigation by spreading out the water, use the building, uh, get all your functions out of the floodplain and at the lower levels flood proof it, uh, strengthen it. So I had two young architects who aren't with us, they, they left already, uh, who created these drawings. Essentially I attended the workshop, we discussed uh, the uh, the solutions for ma disaster mitigation that the National Park Service proposes and, and also which the uh, FEMA and the uh, Army Corps of Engineers suggest for uh, preserving historic buildings. Essentially, this took us about a week to do these drawings. Uh, a little bit uh, company time, a little bit volunteer time from the young architects. And uh, we divided them up to uh, one person, uh, Bhuvana Shankar, drew the site plan, 
and Ali Dow drew the uh, axonometric drawings. Uh, and then, so we kind of had a couple workshops in the office, and then they just drew, and then we uh, chose the colors and kind of put it together for the final. Uh, my name is Brian Jones from BWA Architecture and Planning, and uh, I'm going to walk you through the key decisions, interventions that we thought would be most valuable and most powerful in reusing these mill, mill sites around the state. What we started with was thinking about the site uh, holistically, try to activate the site as much as possible. So we had two large, uh, big choices that we did, decided to make in order to do that. The first was building a bridge that would kind of activate the marsh site to the north and also connect us to the Wissahickon Trail. It seemed like if we could create a flexible bridge structure that could be protected from flooding, that would be a large asset and, and kind of help activate that space and get, get folks uh, using it and, and valuing it. The second large uh, move was to suggest rerouting Mather Lane. If we do this, we can take a road which is very, very close to the building, almost too close, really, uh, and uh, reroute it around the edge of the site, which is owned by the township. And so what we would be doing is adding a little bit of parking uh, to the south uh, with permeable pavers and kind of creating a little bit of a field there for children and others to, to visit. The third move here is to think about how we create place around the river, because this is a proto prototypical solution. So uh, all the mills are located around water, and so regardless of whether a bridge might work in another uh, scenario to activate space, we always are going to have river banks that need to be stabilized, right? And so there's some solid infrastructure that we can build to, um, to solidify the bank and protect the foundations of any mill site anywhere. Um, but how do we make people want to interact with that space? How do we make that enjoyable? Well, we can create terrace seating. Uh, we can have plants uh, that are out there. We can make it kind of a, uh, a public space uh, for socializing and also uh, have it be a place for observation of nature. And so one of the other big directives from uh, Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission was to think about the versatility of the site and how it could be used for as many different functions as possible, essentially a versatile event space. And so um, in thinking about it that way, again, we want the site to be as large as possible, connected with pedestrian, uh, you know, easy for people to walk throughout, again, redirecting Mather's lane around the edge of the site, and then creating uh, event spaces outside of and inside the building um, for, you know, weddings and other social events. And I think that the interventions within the building, uh, which many people focused on, would be to raise the floor level above the current 100-year floodplain and to have at least some portion of the floor at that protected level to protect the most important things within the site, knowing that it is going to continually flood. And so in order to observe nature uh, and have this be a place that we think will be valued by the community, we're trying to uh, enhance it with a deck for observation of wildlife, as well as a bridge, as I mentioned in the beginning, which would connect the entire site to some kind of place. Uh, we can imagine people getting married there or uh, having other kind of special events. And then here, uh, as the road is rerouted, having a kind of natural land preserves that outdoor education uh, can, can uh, take place in. So that's more or less uh, the interventions we, just, we focused on. And we think that uh, the, uh, the majority uh, of them can uh, be used at other similar sites. Thank you. My name is Al Comley. I'm an architect with the firm of Ateta. We, uh, among other things, do historic preservation work, and uh, we're happy to be invited to be involved in Hack the Mill project. Uh, we took a somewhat different approach than trying to uh, develop a plan, per se. We looked at it from the standpoint of what an architect always tries to find, which is um, a client, uh, a program, which means a series of needs, and a budget. So we kind of looked at this from how would you go about that given the fact that this site seems to have a group that would really like to be involved with it but at this point hasn't had a, that opportunity, that being the Friends of Hope Lodge. So we kind of looked at it as though what, it, what would it take to uh, 
really bring that about and what are the, uh, the steps that would be involved in that project. So that's how we took a look at this and began to try and lay that out with the idea of what might be the short term uh, steps that would be taken, the intermediate steps, and then the long term steps and uh, apply some costs to those. So that was our approach again, somewhat different than some of the others that you might see where they would actually take an attempt to develop a uh, scheme for the project. We chose not to do that. We chose to look at it from a more of a process standpoint. Hello, my name is Sean Massey. I'm a staff architect for the State Historic Preservation Office. Um, the matter mill design charrette that I did was focused on embracing the natural environment and also uh, bringing an abandoned historic property that is no longer in use to uh, to a more vibrant action or a more vibrant new life that creates um, positive things for the society that it sits into. So my, my main design uh, point was creating the raceway and making that larger, which would take uh, excavating more dirt, um, which would create this waterway that would connect the creek through the mill. And it also solved the issue of crossing uh, Mathers Lane, which is, could be an issue because there's, uh, it's usually used as a cut through uh, road, which can be very hazardous to pedestrians that are crossing the road. So this also embraces that idea, along with um, bringing uh, this idea of embracing um, the issue of this site, which is flooding, and also um, the neglect that the river has had over years. So through that, you would have a design that makes the user experience the river through this waterway underneath a mill, which then would through awareness or through interaction brings awareness and that's the main focus with the design so through the users interaction with the design of the of the um, of the Mathers mill that you would actually say oh yeah this is a flood prone area this mill is used is sitting in this uh, site just because it, it's near the, the creek area so interacting the creek with the matter mill has been a historic um, attribute for this for this site so creating a new design that did that same thing would be is just a, a, a bonus so the main focus is retaining the open space of the mill so you really not doing any any touches to the inside other than creating um, some climbing areas that would give a, a, a very easy program for the space um, and creating this new raceway that goes underneath the mill um, which on one side would, would bridge across to the island, which can be used as a recreation area to support the program of the whole building. And also, um, it also can be another entryway into the mill that would get you under the road instead of going over the road, which is also taking advantage of the township uh, property, which is, would be uh, additional parking. So the, the supportive acti activities of, this, of the program that I had here would be boating, fishing, biking, climbing, wildlife watching, hiking, paddle boarding, and you could hold uh, events also here. So it's more of a, a social uh, program idea. Well, thank you very much. This has been an exciting evening here at White Marsh Township where we were able to share with everyone the results of the Pennsylvania State Historic Preservation Office's Disaster Planning for Historic Properties Initiative. Again, my name is Andrea MacDonald, Director of the Pennsylvania SHPO, we'd like to call it. If you want to learn more about the Disaster Planning for Historic Properties Initiative uh, or uh, uh, more about the State Historic Preservation Office, feel free to reach out to us uh, and take a look at uh, all of the program information we have on our website. Thanks so much.